there's a, a difference between dreams and goals. And goals to me are like in the here and now trying to get you through the thing that you're going through, either again, athletically, business-wise, whatever it is personally. And what happens is, as you said, if they, they set our expectations. So again, I'm going to use the marathon example because it's the simplest, to, I think, to understand. If I say, you know, this is my goal. My goal is to, you know, run four hours in the marathon and this is make or break. And I set my expectation there. Well, that can get me motivated. But if all of a sudden I'm on mile five, as you said, and like maybe I'm a little slower than four hours, all of a sudden I start spiraling, right? And I'm, I'm not going to meet my goal. So our body and brain essentially default to, well, what's the point? You're not going to meet your goal and you aren't able to give the effort. So what do we do? I think with goals, it comes down to a couple of things is a setting appropriate goals. So goals that, yes, are challenging, maybe that are just beyond your reach, but are within that capabilities, right? They're at least possible. And then the other part that I think is really important that we just talked about is make sure it's authentic as well. And then I think secondarily or third is have some sort of flexibility within them, meaning if you want to run that marathon in four hours, like have some B, C, and D goals. If you want to accomplish whatever in your sales job, like great, but have some goals that are not directly tied to maybe the sales numbers, but something that is related to the process that you can execute on, even if you're not able to accomplish like this outcome-based goal, because we still want to be able to do the tasks that we need to, and we want to prevent us from going to what's the point mode. Yeah, it's so important to reflect on the improvement. You know, so for many of our X Factor Accelerator members, they'll come in with a goal of like, I want to approach five people a day and strike up a conversation, or I want to make three friends in the next month. And it's like, well, how looking historically easy has it been for you to make friends, right? Science says it's hours and hours spent to make a real friend. So do you have 100 plus hours in the next month to make three real friends? Well, no, not really. I have a job and I also have some family obligations and I'm taking some coaching with you guys and I'm doing this other training. Okay, so then we need to reset the goal to be, as you said, like actually in line with what is accomplishable and the amount of time that I've set for that goal. And then we need to take some time and reflect backwards of, okay, you didn't make a friend this month, but how much more social were you this month? How many more social events did you go to? How many more experience did you have? And how did you feel in those social settings? Was there as much fear and anxiety as you had in the past? Was there discomfort? And how many times did you say no to a social gathering or event versus yes, month over month? Right. So even if you fall short of making that friend or approaching the 15 people you had set out to in the month, you have to look back and go, well, I'm a lot more comfortable in social situations. I'm being invited to more things. And I actually have a few people that are acquaintances right now that I didn't have before the month started. And that allows you to stay on track and not get so hard on yourself that you're like, well, I'm just going to quit. Like th this isn't accomplishable for me. I'm going to move on. And we do this every single month in the X Factor Accelerator around, okay, if, if the goal over this month is not in line with what you can truly expect to achieve, it's actually going to be demotivating. It's going to become the reason to turn on Netflix, to flip on the PS5, to surf online and not go out at all. And it just is so unfortunate because many people haven't had that goal setting conversation and they see other people around them achieving larger goals, setting larger goals, and they think, well, why can't I do that? Why doesn't it work the same for me? And I think that's really where the benefit of coaching comes in because a coach is good at being honest with you, sharing their experience around goals, and also can help you with the B, C, and D subset of goals that you might not be thinking about that can be wins that are very motivating as you continue working towards that larger goal, even if you miss it in that time frame. Spot on. I mean, coaches provide perspective that you often can't see when you're in the thick of things, right? And they can pull from that experience. Mm -hmm.